Absolutely beautiful day here in downtown St. Thomas. Uh, in today's episode of Meet the Makers, we're going to go in and meet Jeff Yurick of Yurick Pharmacy. They've been in this location uh, for 60 plus years serving our community. Let's go meet Jeff. Perfect. We're already behind the scenes, so we're going upstairs, I guess. <laughs> We're here on the uh, second floor. It's about the same size as the dispensary downstairs, and this is where we do all our packaging, uh, our compounding, and we've put a lot of money into technology just to make it safer for people, but at the same time get things done a lot quicker. Okay. So we come back here. This is our SinMed machine. They call it Cindy. <laughs> Paula yeah. here is our main uh, assistant here that runs this machinery, although we have everyone as cross-trained as possible okay. uh, to run it. But this is uh, where Paula does her day in, day out, lives and breathes the SinMed machine. What would you have done before this? Before this, it all be by hand. Okay. Um, so you would do one patient at a time, uh, and there's a lot of human error involved with that. Okay. So what we've done, we've invested in this technology here. It can do up to eight patients at a time. There's 400 different meds inside that machine that this robot will pick and, and put them in the right positions for okay. this packaging. It has a lot of uh, uh, technology behind it to reduce uh, human error. That really reduces the error in the packaging and really makes a flow better up here, safer the, for patients and a lot easier for the staff. Working so here. safety, efficiency, and, and just making sure obviously what you're delivering to patients is as crystal clear as possible. 100%, I, I think this is, uh, a great uh, investment for our company that we made and uh, I think it's great for our patients and customers that come in and want their, their meds packaged in the DOS Would you be kind of the only player with some piece of technology like this around our area? I would say we're probably one of the only, uh, definitely in Elgin County that okay. would have this machinery here. There's very few in London alone. Uh, it's, it's quite an investment to be made, uh, but we believe in investing in our staff and our patients to make uh, uh, healthcare that, that much better for them. I love it. Alrighty. So we're going to see this uh, this operate and fulfill fill some of these. All right. Paul is going to get it. See how it's barcoded to get it started. Make sure it's safe. And uh... you know, as we're watching this, and you mentioned four hundred different drugs in here. Yes. So you pick the top four hundred medications that most people are on or could be on the past the ones that are prescribed the most and they're they're put into this machine okay um those that have a short shelf life or half tablets quarter tablets then we put them to the side to add in because the last thing you want to do is put in any medications that would ex be expired and that's what's great about this the other fool safe is because this is all barcoded um, to fill the meds up it's virtually impossible to make a mistake to put the wrong pills in the in the in the machine itself to start with, but it also keeps track of the expiry date. And this would normally take hours upon hours to do this many patients over the course of a day. And then, so this is the second stage, obviously, d d this person putting the, to the DOS sets, yep. but something happens over here in advance anyways. So yeah, so this is the, the tray preparation. So what happens, we generate the prescriptions through our workflow system main uh, dispensary system. So we bill the government, make sure the drug's right and the prescriptions are filled. And then it populates over here into this system here. And what will happen here is it'll do a report for Paula and it'll tell her uh, what, the, what the drug is uh, that needs to be added to this machine. Now there's only two, so she's, she's giving you luck here, but sometimes there could be 10, okay. could be 14. Gives you a picture of the drug um, and then you, it's a barcoding. So basically she takes a uh, and barcodes to make sure she has the right drug and then it tells her where to put that in the in the machine and the green ones then obviously so yeah. th that's what that those are where and, you're and she basically fills that up oh so when she's done she just places it over there and then she can pull out another thing and start working ahead so she can really get ahead so right now you could have 16 patients going and working on their you know the next eight more so at 24 ready to roll so you can see how efficient this really yeah. becomes in flowing and actually, the pharmacists are the ones that get caught up because they're checking it individually and one by one, so she can really pile on the work to them. And she, she likes to do that Friday afternoons when everybody's able for the weekend, right? So, so basically, 
uh, this is how an end result will be. You notice how all the meds are packaged for um, morning and uh, dinner time for this patient. So uh, on the match, there's morning meds and how many pills of each drug is in there and dinner. And down here, and I'm just hiding it for, uh, um, so we don't show the patient's name, but even on these little packets, it lists out all the meds that are supposed to be in that packet. So the pharmacist will check the visual, and, and sometimes it can get kind of hectic with the uh, amount of pills in there. That's why the, the new AI yeah. that will be coming out that we'll be investing in will really help with the process. On our way in, we pass what you described as a compound station. Right, right. Can we take a look at that too? Sure, sure. Uh, a few years ago, the uh, College of Pharmacists put out new legislation, regulation, that you had to have a protective uh, environment for compounding because naturally some of these items are, uh, are, can be uh, quite hazardous to people. So we have this safe flow hood here which allows us to prepare compounds and, and keep the staff safe. Um, and Not simplify it real quick. Comp like what are we Compound is making making things. Okay. That's basically we make creams, we make tablets, we make ointments, we make suppositories, we make little trochies. Uh, make suspensions. We anything you, you need, we can make. There's not okay. a lot of pharmacies that do that anymore. Um, Why? Uh, well, because it's it's an investment. I okay. mean, there's quite an investment to bring the medication. Also, a lot of training. We do it specialty compounding as well. So we've taken it to the next level. We've got some. Uh, we joined PCCA Pharmaceutical Compounding Centers of America. Uh, we had some additional training, which is why we have all these cool gadgets that can make things for people, like that ointment machine back here. Basically, it does all the churning at the back there okay. um, to make that cream. There's a cream inside that, that little container pod there. Um, and uh, so what they're doing is basically filling their compounds. Um, as I said, there's not many people that actually can do this anymore. Um, and, uh, you know, we're busy at it every day. But this is really where pharmacy started, is compounding back before there's any... I, we take for granted all the medications. Say we have 400 in that yeah, machine. Yeah, that are already pre-done you know, and you're just picking and packing. 50 years ago, 60 years ago, there wasn't even an inkling of that many drugs to be put in one of those machines that people would take. A lot of uh, a lot of compounding um, was what, what made pharmacy. They made it up. Um, before there was like morphine tablets available, they used to make a mixture. Show. I got my dad's old recipe book, uh, the Brompton's Cocktail, which had brandy in it. It had morphine powder. It had cocaine in it. And they would make this stuff up for pain control for people. You, it wasn't available. So this type of compounding, we're returning back to the roots of pharmacy, which I, I think is really cool. And it's really enjoyable for the staff to do and the pharmacist to figure out the, the, the math and the, the science behind it all. Or the it art work. of it, right? Like, I mean, the you, art you is find, right. find, some, know, find some... They're doing there. the artwork right now. Yeah. Um, the, that, the, the compounding of the medication is where it's put together. Uh, and, and I know it's making a bigger compound. There's more pharmacists coming out that, that want to be part of the, the, the compounding that's happening. That's awesome. So I guess your next step then is to come up with your own type of pop. Like that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it's in my safe, the one I'm You're working on. You're at Cola there. over right. there? Okay. Well, our business, uh, we're heading into our 60th, uh, 61st year. We're celebrating 60 years this fall. My dad started the pharmacy in 1963. Uh, same location, we've kind of expanded over the years, but uh, we're a full run pharmacy. We have a mobility department, we have home health care supplies, well diversified prescriptions, many opportunities to deal with our pharmacists on a clinical basis to help you make sure you're using your meds appropriately, side effects, give you some advice. Uh, great staff on customer service coming in and treating you like you're one of our family. You said a lot of great things obviously about like you know six decades in business, mm -hmm. a family business located and committed to being in downtown St. Thomas. Why does that matter? Well I, I think that's uh, something that uh, we've gotten away with the corporate world moving in. I think it's great that uh, I think it speaks volumes of my dad to start a business uh, out of uh, working for Mr. Burns down the street after uh, graduating from the University of Toronto. Uh, he came from immigrant parents uh, to our, our, our country, started this business, and he was able to pass it down to the next generation that we're, we're proud to always try to hold up our standard to what, what business was like in the 60s because it was based on customer service and uh, we hope to continue that. So it's important for the city of St. Thomas, you know, we are great employers for the area. We, we, uh, overall, for all our businesses in St. Thomas and London, we're, we're over 130 people all the time employed. 
Uh, we like to give back to the community, like to celebrate St. Thomas and Elgin County. We think it's very important for Ontario. We, we think it's the, the heartbeat of Ontario. Yeah. Uh, I've said that many, many times before, but uh, I try to live it each and every day. And, and what St. Thomas has accomplished over the years, uh, the people that have come forth and gone out and, and made changes to this world, we want to celebrate that and we try to do that each and every day. And, and as I said, being on this main street of St. Thomas with a newly uh, finished uh, road and parking. We're pretty excited about it and uh, we can hardly wait till the rest of Talbot Street's done and I think downtown's gonna have a great celebration and and if you haven't been to St. Thomas and you haven't shopped in downtown, get your butts down here. There's lots to see and do and it's outside of the corporate world. It's individual independent businesses uh, servicing you with what their their values and their needs are.